I wanted to save myself some time on post-production. I know it's not much, but uh, that's why I did that. I programmed our theme song into the podcast board. But I, I put the intro itself onto the video, so that means that now it'll be double music on there. So thank you for that. I'm sure I'll find a way. Okay, well, there's probably the raw file that I sent to you that has the logo and stuff without the music built into it that you could possibly still use. At this point in my life, I think we'll be good. I think we'll manage. It'll be good. You want to start again? Because no, just... I'm I'm good. We're good. I got my no edits. Um, no edits. There's no. There's definitely no edits tonight. I don't. So we're recording later than we normally do. Um, it, it's been a long week. Uh, yeah. We're. I don't normally drink on the podcast, but it is uh, the uh, XFL's 21st birthday uh, this week, and so we're doing the 21 run for the XFL. And so I got my Shiner Bach here. We'll open here. There you go. Oh, sounds like it sounds like I'm with a Bruce Pritchard podcast. Yeah. Well, the beers opening on that podcast where we're doing it. I don't have a drink. I'm sorry. I can't okay. cheers you right now. It's been a long week for me too. Um, you know, just a lot of things going down for us. And uh, yeah, you know, we had to do this late at night because scheduling conflicts and our, our weeks were packed with stuff. We're here to bring you another episode of the Marcast. Yeah, uh, FCF and Patrick Deese, if you want to do your bubble on the on the West Coast next time, that would be great for us to uh, start scheduling guests more. Yeah, good, good idea. Good idea. I mean, we, you know, they could do it on the West Coast and then not promote their appearances on our on our podcast. But hey, that's another thing. Uh, the, that that is that is the elephant of the room. I don't know. Maybe we'll get into that later. But that is uh, there's. Could be, I just, you know, a little preface, uh, could be a little snippy this week, uh, just in general. It's just been a long week, a lot of stuff going on. Uh, I'm really happy to record now. Uh, I know that even though we're recording 7 p.m. Pacific right now on Thursday, tomorrow morning, there's still going to be breaking XFL news that we're going to miss. Works. So it doesn't matter when we record. I know that it's going to be, uh, we're going to miss it. Something's going to happen at two in the morning. And uh, yeah, sorry, we missed it. No. We, we recorded it as late as possible, but we missed it. Sorry. Yeah. Paul just, just got done with work. We just got done with dinner. We're, we're, we're doing it. So anyway, thank you for, uh, for making the time. Cool. So, uh, you wanted to start off. Where do you want to start off with on the show this week? Because uh, you know, there's not too much happening, but there's some stuff. I, I got a lot. Yeah. A couple of things. Uh, we had a review come in today. Uh, it's stuff like that that really does. I spent a lot of time on this podcast. Um, you do. You know, I really appreciate when people, you know, share the podcast, you know, like the podcast and especially uh, reviews. Uh, XFL Jim, he, he is a friend of the show. He left a great review today. He does his own um, kind of uh, he has his own garage league and he does a bunch of his own picks and stuff for like, um, you know, college football and XFL and, and NFL. And he left this really good review on Apple Podcasts. Uh, Listen, I'm a man of culture like many. Of course, I love the XFL. These guys, when they speak and they give their takes, they blow the dang doors off my garage. It's kind of like a metaphor he uses, which wow. is something that is usually reserved for me when I run through a car after a night of partying. So he is basically equating our podcast to him running a, a, a car through after a night of partying. Can't recommend these dudes enough. They get some bomb guests. I cannot wait to hear when they uh, say the XFL is coming back and kicking everyone in the teeth. This is a real garage certified podcast. So there's a lot of Jim, Jim's, a, Jim's an interesting a gimmick. Jim's there's a gimmick there. Jim, Jim is, yeah, Jim like lives the gimmick. Uh, but thank you, xflshow.com slash review. If you're a fan of XFL, TSL, Fan control football. I got uh, people messaging me today about CFL coming back again. So just uh, feel free to leave us a review. It really does kind of lift my spirits uh, to get those, especially on long weeks like this when there's uh, a lot going on outside the podcast. So I appreciate it. Also, it would be great if you went, o- went over to xflshow.com slash merch and bought some Markcast merchandise. Make yep. this a profitable venture for us. Uh, Pretty good. Yeah, I, I normally would have worn my uh, XFL Markcast sweatshirt tonight. I did get my WrestleMania um in uh, in um, anticipation of the Tampa Bay Super Bowl, I do want to do picks here on the podcast. Uh, Super yeah. Bowl picks. Uh, this was from Tampa Bay last year when they when they didn't do it. They did it at the Performance Center, but they uh, WWE had made all of the jerseys, you know, already and the chairs and everything marketed. So a guy was selling this new on eBay for like seventy dollars. I said absolutely not, and I got him down. I think I got it for thirty bucks, and it came this week. So I'm very excited. This is you know, it's kind of a rare. It is, you know, and it's and, and you love your WrestleMania jerseys. He has a collection of all these jerseys, folks. 
every time we go to one of these events, you see he's never not wearing one of these things. So yeah, so I did take out the Marcus sweatshirt off right now. That's why I was delayed getting going. Uh, we did have one other. Uh, Jenna left a really great uh, comment on our YouTube channel, xflshow.com slash YouTube. We, we've been getting a lot more banter on there and a lot of comments. I really appreciate that. Uh, we had, you know, our big episode last week we'll talk about with Greg Miller, um, you know, great uh, reception from our listeners. I don't know if, if from any other listeners, but um, uh, Jenna said this was a great episode. It was so cute. Him talking about the story, walking in and getting his XFL gear. I will be cheering for the Wild Aces, uh, but she thinks some of the, the fan controlled, you know, the basketball rules, the social media, the changes feel too much like a video game. We we're going to get into all the fan controlled stuff later. Still sounds like fun. Uh, I'm hope I'm able to watch it. Maybe they just could have called it fan controlled league, like football edition. And then they could have done like a baseball edition because it, it's not, you know, it, it's a, this new approach of style and changes are going to work. Uh, but she doesn't really know if it's, if it's, you know, for everybody that likes football. So I really appreciate it. She said it was the best episode we had yet. And she had wished that the uh, segment would have been called the Mark Castaways and not the things that annoy Paul, but that is not uh, what we landed mm -hmm. on with the what the vote was folks. And everybody knows how much these things at the end of the show annoy me. So so uh, thank you, Jenna. Yeah, xflshow.com slash review and then xflshow.com slash YouTube if you're listening to the podcast. I love seeing all the comments and the banter and stuff that way on the YouTube channel. So I really appreciate that. Cool. So let's get into the uh, meat of this. Uh, first and foremost, the big, big hire that we saw in Houston, uh, Texans hiring Pep Hamilton as their quarterback's coach. Uh, I'm so glad we devoted five minutes on the podcast last week to Pep uh, doing an interview with the Steelers. And then like literally like I think I it was it was either that night or the next day. I, I like Pep's hired by the by the uh, Texans. And I thought that is just our luck. But um, it's interesting for them because, you know, the Texans might not actually have a quarterback right now if, if you know, Deshaun Watson is. So that is interesting. What do you think about this? Uh, it's a great hire. You, you saw what he did with Justin Herbert. He made him the offensive rookie of the year. I believe he was offensive rookie of the year. I'm I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Uh, you know, he he's he's great with quarterbacks. He's there. The, who is the guy that uh, that people were like, oh, he's always good as a as a quarterbacks coach and never as a head coach or an offensive coordinator. I'm trying to think of his name. It'll come to me later on. I'm sure of it. Uh, but Pep did great with uh, with Justin Herbert. So. Whoever the Texans have as their quarterback, because I don't think Deshaun Watson's coming back. No, no, I don't think it's going to happen. So whoever the Texans have as their quarterback, whether it be Tua from Miami or whoever they draft when the Jets give up like eight years of first round picks for uh, Deshaun, whoever that is, uh, we'll, we'll, it's interesting to see what 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 he'll be able to do with them. Yeah, and I saw that Herbert won. It was like the Pepsi Coke Zero or something like a player that rookie of the year. Is that I assume is that the official one or is that I mean they branded as that? I did see that today. Him holding like a trophy. So yeah, that was that's the official branding. And Norv Turner, who is is who I was thinking about. Uh, Norv Turner was the guy that always good as a quarterbacks coach, but once he got to that offensive coordinator head coach level, didn't quite work out for him. So uh, let's let's uh, let's look for the best for. Uh, Pep with whoever he has to work with in Houston. Yeah, it's just, just a lot of moving parts there. You know, like so, you know, with Deshaun, I mean, he seems really unhappy about it. I've even seen my, my favorite thing now is uh they're showing uh Deshaun Watson showing up for training camp like James Harden and they've like fatified him and <laughs> to try to like how James Harden lost. Oh, yeah, we're not fat shaming James Harden. Uh my other don't, question, don't uh, like talking it's about it's hard for me to call James Harden my boy because he plays for my Brooklyn Nets, but he went to that crappy Arizona State school, so it's hard for me to like. It, it, I'm like split in the middle on James still. Um, a question for you while while we're on the quarterback situation with the Texans, who do you think got the better uh, trade deal with Matthew Stafford uh, going to the Rams or uh, the the million uh, first round picks and uh, Jared Goff on the side going to the Alliance? It depends on who the Lions pick. I don't think we can make a determination. Short term, uh, the, the Rams win this. In the short term, uh, Matthew Stafford's going to have, have access to weapons that he's never had access to. He's going to have an offensive line that he's never had in Detroit. They're going to do great things in L.A., but Stafford is... How old is Stafford now? What He's, he's in his 30s now, right? He's getting in the there. league like nine years, so... What? I think he's yeah. like 33, 32, 33. Yeah, he's he's getting up there. So, um if Stafford is able to help the Rams, I would say I would honestly say if Stafford doesn't get the Rams at least to the NFC Championship game next year, 
then this is this is going to go Detroit's way, depending on who the Detroit Lions pick up in the draft with all the picks they got from the Rams. Yeah, he's 32. So I was I was close. You were close. So you figure he's got maybe five, six years left in in his Yeah. So I think we're gonna be able to determine where this goes and who got the better end of the deal five years from now. Uh, my my favorite uh, thing right now is Jared Goff being sent to Detroit is like John Snow being. I know you're not a Game of Thrones fan, but like uh-huh. John, but but for anyway, it's it's like John Snow being sent uh, to the Wall, you know, because <laughs> like being sent to the North because you know John Snow like you know he lived in the North, but it wasn't like the cold cold North, and then he got exiled to to be a watcher on the Wall. And it was, but so he shows up and it's like, you know, it's just like a barren tundra and like nothing going on. And that's like Jared Goff going to Detroit, right? I mean, he was living in sunny LA, right? He had, did he have a good pad in LA? Oh, oh yeah. I'm sorry. You're talking about games of Game of Thrones there. I was yeah. falling asleep. Uh, he had a great pad in LA. He had an amazing house. Is Get he rid- married or is he like a playboy? I think he's married. Okay. I, I mean, believe he's married. I don't like, I like Goff, but something seems off about him. I don't know. I think, I think Goff was just tired. Yeah. of of you know i think he's just tired of being here i mean who would want who'd be get tired of being in la i don't know i mean he's a california kid and depending on you know if if he's 26 if the lions put some weapons around him you know in five years the lions could be a contender but they could trade him uh, back to la and get the next guy again right <laughs> anyway. who would have who would have thought uh, yeah, that, I just was curious about that. Uh, yeah, so Deshaun Watson, we'll see. Pep Hamilton, uh, it is interesting though how, how how cold we were about that. You know, talking about him going to the Steelers, and then it was like the second we hit record, you know, stop. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, Goff apparently has an enzyme deficiency that doesn't allow his body to break down proteins. Among the difficulties, it creates an inability to process red meat. Oh. I never knew. <laughs> he seems a little soft. I. Sorry. Not soft like Charmin, but soft <laughs> Not soft like Charmin. I just think it would like, you know, you get to a point where you're just like, I can't do anything else here. They don't want me here. Uh, the Wolford thing maybe kind of put a bad yep. taste in his mouth. Who knows? Maybe, maybe a fresh, fresh start in Detroit. Even if they don't have the weapons around him, maybe he'll find a way to win in Detroit. Go eight and eight. Uh, you really don't have to deal with too many teams like the Bears suck. Uh, the Vikings are always terrible. Well, not always terrible, but as of late, um, all you got to really do is deal with the Packers. You win one of the two games against them, and you're in the hunt for a playoff spot in the North. Kirk Cousins was on Good Morning Football this week. He does seem like the nicest gentleman in the world. Uh, I don't. Uh, the people of Minnesota don't think he's nice at all. He's been stealing their money for years. <laughs> yeah, he, he can gritty though. That that was the best thing. There's nothing like seeing a white guy gritty. Oh yeah, yeah. And of course, his time in Washington, where he's like, "Oh yeah, you like that?" I remember that that meme for <laughs> for years and years and years. Ah, heck, he and yeah, he and Phil Rivers are like the no cussing, the no cussing quarterbacks. Heck yeah, <laughs> no cussing and intense quarterbacks. Yeah. So speaking of quarterbacks, Matt Rule says there's nothing to add uh, regarding the uh, Panthers' quarterback situation. Is that what Sheena Quick is saying? Just another update. You know, again, we keep an eye on the Panthers just because our boy PJ and it. You know they got the eighth uh, uh, seat or eighth pick coming up in the draft, and uh, he just Matt Rule had nothing else to add. It just seems like you know I don't know if Teddy's going to be long for the world. They're going to maybe bring in someone, get the you know the second year out of Teddy, and then maybe move to someone else. Possibly, possibly they're paying him twenty million, so they might as well just stick the course right now. Draft maybe their future. It uh, doesn't seem like they're going to go with uh, Greer or uh, PJ long term after this. Maybe draft their future with the eighth pick, and then uh, go from there. Yeah, so. I just don't know what what's next for PJ. I just don't know what you do. I with sports in general, right? If you're like that kind of, you know, you're not a young uh, player anymore or a quarterback, and then you know, obviously, you're not getting a lot of starts. Like, I just know what what's next for you. Do you go into PR? Do you go into you know, uh, athletic coaching? management, coaching? No, yeah. maybe coaching. I don't know. So moving on, uh, another uh, XFL, former XFLer, uh, Taylor Heineke, apparently has impressed former Washington quarterback Joe Theismann. Uh, maybe that they should just, the Washington football team, whoever, maybe if they get a nickname next year, uh, the Washington football team should roll them out. 
That's what Joe Thigh's been saying. Yeah, Van the Man sent this to me today. Uh, and we had the other one about the execs who uh, are, are, are oppressed with both of them. But uh, Van seems to think that. His, his thing to, to me today was if, if Theismann is high on him, he's maybe got the ear of Ron Rivera a little bit to give him a shot. And, and I don't think it's a non-zero chance that we see Taylor at least get, you know, uh, in training camp, get a little play time there with that option. It's going to be interesting to see who comes out in the preseason as the starter. Because we're definitely we're definitely gonna have a preseason this time around. We didn't have one last year because of COVID. We're gonna have one this year more than likely because we saw the injuries. We we know that they're gonna need the preseason games. So if Taylor comes out game one as the preseason starter and then game two, there's a good chance Taylor's gonna start on opening day for uh, the Washington football team. It's gonna be interesting to see if they listen to Theismann or not. Just interesting. It just seems like he's got a lot of fans there. I mean, that's the dream, right? I, we still maintain, you know, that was like the Rudy situation coming off the bench, playing against Brady. Uh, you know, he still gets mentioned. I know part of it's a joke, but, you know, when you talk about like Brady making it to the Super Bowl and, okay, he beat Aaron Rodgers, he beat Drew Brees, he beat Taylor Heineke, you know, don't, uh, or Heineke, sorry, I uh, don't, uh, don't forget that, 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 you know, they really have, had a real shot at that. And it was a really close, uh, close game. And you and you take this into account because Theismann suffered an injury that that was very similar to what Alex Smith suffered, and I believe Kyle Allen suffered the same kind of similar injury. But Alex Smith's was way more. Alex Smith might have died. That's how bad his his leg injury was. And Theismann had a very similar injury. So to, for Theismann not to like gravitate toward Alex Smith, a guy who has had the very same injury that he had that ended his career, that says something for Taylor Heineke in my opinion, that, that Theismann wouldn't go toward that emotional feel-good pick in picking the guy that, that was very similar to him at the end of the career. Uh, and that's another thing about Alex Smith. You know, he's been at this for a while. I was working in Salt Lake in 2002, 2003, when Alex Smith was in college there. Alex Smith's not a spring chicken. He's, he's going to be wrapping it up soon. So uh, this, is, this is pretty much, this is a stamp of approval. This is a big-time stamp of approval. Yeah, Smith said, you know, he he still hasn't made a decision for next year. He doesn't know, but you just you've always wondered since he came back. You know, I know that he got, you know, the surgically repaired leg, he's got that brace and everything, but it's just, you know, how much of a future is there? I mean, I know that it's great. He came back, he got the comeback player of the year award, but um, you know, that that doesn't make you a phenomenal quarterback, right? I mean, just being able to come back, being able to, to persevere and get through all that, that doesn't necessarily mean like, okay, we need right. I mean, it's it's not those things aren't connected. I think Alex Smith is is not a Hall of Famer, but he is a good quarterback. I do believe in Alex Smith. I think he's a great quarterback. I don't think he's a Hall of Famer, but I think he's a great quarterback. And his his story about how he came back from this injury uh, is just inspiring. It really is when you when you like go through it. And I think they did a documentary about him coming back. Mm-hmm. It was an it was an inspiring story, but um, I just don't see Alex Smith being good enough to possibly be in contention for the starting role i don't know would you rather watch the alex smith movie or the taylor heineke movie if they had to make one first <sighs> that's a good question it's a very good question let's get back to that in i'll i'll think it over you while think, we're going through the rest but of that's the a real question you know because you got the coming yeah. through life life-threatening injury you know the virus you know he had the infection all that coming back 17 surgeries and then you have the real life rudy Coming on the field, playing Tom Brady. I mean, get, I, I've said this before. Get Sean Aston in there. We got to. We got to. Can we combine the two movies into one and just make it all feel good and like for both stories? But Tyler Heineke, like he he has the leg injury and then he comes back and then. They could do that. Hollywood's Hollywood's crazy. They yeah. could do that. Why uh, not? Taylor, I, I'm still I'm still working working our webs to get Taylor on the show. That would be that would be my big get right now. That would be the it. winner. That would be the winner for able to pull. So interesting executives are also impressed with both of them. According to this article from uh, NBC sports, Taylor and Alex Smith. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, new general manager, Martin Mayhew and new executive vice president of football player personnel, Marty Herney uh, seem very interested, uh, very, very imp- impressed with both quarterbacks. So it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. Um, of course, we're going to be rooting for te- uh, Heineke to get the starting gig, but you never know. And never know. Uh, Ron Rivera posted, I think late last week, officially cancer free. So congratulations to Ron Rivera yes. as well. So, so winning all around for the Washington football team, just not on the field. 
especially I got to say this because Ron Rivera is a fellow Puerto Rican. So uh, definitely glad uh, also on that front that he did beat cancer because I like to see my fellow Puerto Ricans win, win in life. <laughs> That's good. I'm going there. Yeah. Why not? So. Do you want to talk about this football, this team nine football? Yeah. Let's talk about this. Uh, what? I didn't even know this thing existed. So this, I'm just telling you this right now. If you guys, if you're, uh, I'm not going to buy this, but if you're, if you're a merch person, DM me on, on Twitter, XFL Mark, I'll send you the link to this. It's basically, you know, all the XFL teams this year, you know, like the dragons, you know, like they have their ball, right? Like, you know, the green and whatever, and like the roughnecks and all this other stuff. So the team nine ball or the team nine, that was like the backup team. There were the, uh, basically it was supposed to be like, if someone got hurt, all these other players were conditioned with all the new uh, rules and everything. So you could like transition someone in right away. They had their own ball and it, it wasn't branded. It was just like an XFL, um, it's, it was just like the blue, the XFL color blue. Uh, but it was basically like a league ball that wasn't a team ball. And then when the league went bankrupt, they like took all these and they, they, they all went away. But uh, apparently the company that's selling them, that is the company that made them. So they are like official. Um, okay. I was talking with Van about it, of course. Van, he's the merch guy. Had worked a lot with the league before about trying to get some other uh, merchandising deals and stuff going, uh, but but they're they're legit, they're official, they look really cool. I think it's 125, so it's like the price of a ball. But I know a lot of people want the game balls; they're sold out a lot. They have like their the mini replica ones. I think still a couple of them are available. But if you want a league ball uh, that's that's like not branded at all, it's just XFL, it's official one uh, with all the the grips and all that stuff. It's uh, send me a DM, I'll send you the link. But it's cool. It definitely was. I saw it. I was like, wow, that's interesting. That's that'd be an interesting kind of uh, niche uh, memorabilia to have in your collection. And, you know, it'd be a conversation starter for sure. Dorothy, I'm not going to buy it. Don't worry. But I already I have my ball. I have my ball. I don't need another one. I have a dragon's fault. But it is interesting. If you wanted the ball, that is, you could go get that. Uh, moving on to more XFL news. Of course, the uh, Oliver Luck McMahon saga continues uh, the dueling lawsuits. I'm reading more of this here where they're talking about how uh, uh, apparently Luck used his personal, or used the XFL issued iPhone for personal matters, and he relocated to Indiana. I didn't know this was a thing that he did, which was far away from the, uh, the headquarters in Connecticut, and he did this when the pandemic struck. Yeah, that was a big t- uh, sticking point that Vince has always said. Is that he thought back in like March and April, you know, during all that, that luck wasn't there. And and Vince is a you know very much values loyalty and the team and WWE and you know it's ride or die, damn it, and you're with us. And that that Oliver, he felt like Oliver kind of fled, but you know would make sense, right? Like Oliver wanted to get home to his family. I mean, you yeah. you definitely get. I I say I side with Oliver more on that. What say you? Well, you know, you have to realize you hear stories from like Bruce Pritchard and Jim Cornette and Vince Russo about how intense Vince is when it comes to having people around him when it comes to WWE matters. Like he wants you in Stanford. If you're if you're a lonely writer, he wants to be able to have you there at any time. Three in the morning, he's going to call you. He's going to bother you about something. These are all stories we've known for years. And knowing how much how passionate he was about the XFL. And I, I, I dare say this, I'm not sure I can't say this definitively, but the optics would appear as though Vince cared more about the XFL the last year than he did WWE. Is that a fair assumption to make? So if, if that were the case in a hypothetical situation that he cared more about the XFL, it would be a bad sign for Oliver just to go, I'm going to go back to Indiana and be with my family during COVID. COVID. It would be a bad sign to Vince, not necessarily a bad sign to all of us that think, well, he wants to be around his family, like you pointed out. Uh, but that seems to be kind of an issue that Vince is taking is that he feels, feels all of our luck just went through the coop. Yeah, this would always would kill me so much about this and Vince shuttering the league so quick. Excuse me, I'm going to burp here. And all that kind of stuff is, you know, this really was his last gung ho at this league. You know, we're going to talk here. Uh, you know, it's the 21st birthday of the XFL this week. You know, they were they were announced, and then the, the game was a year later. So the game played, you know, 20 years ago. The league was announced a year before that. But you know, the fact that 
you know, it, he put all this money in time that this was his last, that, you know, it was his one failure. And they always said that NBC or uh, it was uh, ESPN did like the 30 for 30 on the XFL failure. And that was really what like, ticked Vince off and was like, all right, damn it. I'm going to come back. I'm going to do this again, you know, to prove because there's nothing in his life that Vince wasn't successful at, right? You know, took over his dad's business. You know, people that don't know, you know, Vince's dad, uh, Vincent, you know, senior was in the wrestling. Uh, Wrestling back then used to be way more territorial. So you would have like the Northwest and the Northeast and the South and Florida was a thing. And then Vince came in and uh, basically expanded and took over all of that and turned, you know, what is now WWE, you know, turned it from this regional thing where, you know, it was just these local shows into this national and now, you know, it's international and it, it, it's exploded. So the point is Vince has never failed at anything except, except the XFL. And so the fact that he went all in again, you know, two years ago, and then now I just will never understand why he pulled the plug so quick. Uh, neither will I. Uh, I think he should have stayed around. Um, there's, there was plenty of money to be, there was plenty of money to go back into it and stay into it. Um, it's a good, it's going to be a good question that I think that we'll never have answered. So Former Tampa Bay OC uh, offensive coordinator for the Vipers, uh, Jamie Elizondo, has been named the head coach for Edmonton football team up uh, north in the uh, Canadian Football League. Yeah, good for him. Uh, it's always good to see former XFL guys. You know, Pep Hamilton, we just talked about. Uh, he's going up to the CFL. We're going to be doing um, CFL uh, coverage here. I, I would imagine, depending on how the news goes, we'll get into talking about XFL timeline stuff again. But uh, yeah, good for him. Uh, going to be a, a head coach. That's I, I would imagine that would be a jump to go from a XFL, you know, be considered the jump to go to a, a CFL head coaching gig. I, it's a big jump. I mean, the CFL has been around for years. It's probably you know, arguably, arguably the second longest football team, second longest football league operational in North America. So it's, I think it's a huge jump and I think it's, it's something to definitely be congratulated on. And uh, as we mentioned numerous times, it is the 21st birthday of the original XFL. So it can now have a drink. Are you drinking still? Or did you slow down a little? I got my, my shiner. Um, that was always the thing. That was the big complaint. You know, Vince announced it, uh, I believe February 2nd, you know, 2000. Then it was February 3rd, 2001. They played the first game and uh, they always, people always thought that that one year turnaround was way too quick to try to get the players in and the teams and the practice and all that stuff. And so then when Vince came back in, uh, you know, 90 or uh, 2019, you know, it's like, okay. XFL is going to be coming back. Um, or I guess it would be 18 to 2020. My years are always screwed up. And then, um, you know, people thought, okay, good. They're going to give him two years. We're going to have all this time, whatever. Well, now, I know last week we talked on the podcast, okay, timelines don't matter. You know, they did it last year. They did it this year. We are now very much at a year out from the XFL stuff. And I don't want to be the guys that are boohooing and um, talking timelines all the time. But the fact that we still, it's Thursday night now, you know, we're at Super Bowl and then football kind of goes away. I know we have fan control football, but football kind of goes away after the Super Bowl. What do you think that we still don't have news at all? Uh, I think that, well, I think that, de- that there's a definite issue with the uh, logos that's going on with the Roughnecks logos from the Patriots and the Oilers issues. I think that's kind of being squared away. That's one thing they got going on. They still haven't filled that position to my knowledge that we saw the other day that the chief of football operations yeah, or whatever CFO. it was called. Um, that's another thing that, that I don't think they filled. So maybe those two things together um, are the reason why it's not going. Um, I, I couldn't speculate. I'd love to find out. Maybe we, maybe there's some kind of person we can contact. Maybe you have a contact that you can reach out and maybe get some answers on that. It just, maybe. yeah, I just, I know people are worried. Zach, one of our listeners, we were messaging today again. Uh, people are getting really worried. They're getting really worried. You know, a couple of weeks ago, I said, don't worry about it. Then another week goes by, another week goes by. At some point we are, you know, presumably a year out and it is time to be concerned. I think it's, I think also we need to take something else into account that there's a stupid pandemic that's still going on because people don't want to wear masks. Yeah. That's the thing. Too. So with that being said, we're going to take a quick break, uh, dip into our commercial commercial situation with our distributor. We're we'll right back with uh, fan control football news and a little bit of spring, uh, spring, we got spring league. league. We got spring league. Cool. We'll be right back. I don't touch the camera anymore because I don't want to blur it. Oh, that's fine. You complained about blurring it last time, so I don't want to blur it now. 
you uh, auto exposed up a little bit. You look good. I might not even edit that. We'll see. We'll, we'll see how we do at the end of the episode. I might just leave all that in just roll because you got the ads for the audio. I might viewers of the YouTube video will know if Reed was motivated enough to edit the uh, the stinger in between the ad segments tonight for the video. If you're not motivated. It doesn't matter to me. Yes, and I, you do whatever you want to do. <laughs> Uh, you don't work for me. I don't yeah, work we, for you. That's the way we're all here. Yeah, we good. So there we go. Uh, Brian Scott trying out with the Colts. Good. This is this is big. This is good. We got a couple of TSL things here. Uh, you know, uh, I, I emailed Brian this week. I said, uh, love some news right now. <laughs> and so I didn't hear back. I, I presume nothing's going on right now. Uh, Brian Scott on his Instagram uh, had the snowy plains of uh, Indianapolis. Where are the Colts? Indianapolis. <laughs> Indiana, yes. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I messaged him on. Uh, you know, we talked on Twitter. He said things are going well there. He's still there. He says it's been a long tryout process, but uh, God's feed for Brian Scott. I, I know that you know we obviously a friend of the show here has been on the show, MVP of the Spring League last year, and uh, I think that would be great. Uh, Indianapolis uh, needs a. I don't. I don't think he's going to like start next year for the Colts, no, they, but they could, use, they could use a solid backup. I'm just saying, yeah, you know, uh, Philip Rivers is done. Uh, you know, it will, we'll Kobe see. Brissett's now there, I believe, still. Jacoby Brissett's under contract. I don't know. I don't know <laughs> the Colts. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's not one of the – I mean, I'm trying to be realistic here, right? You know, is Brian Scott going to start, uh, you know, in, in August, September for the Colts? Probably not. But like you said, I think it's, it'd be a good uh, gig for him to get in there and to get his feet into the league. I certainly think he deserves it. I'm just trying to be realistic about, you know, expectations. I mean, we are the Mark cast, but I don't want to be like, you know, well, Scott started, you know, Phil forever. It's like, we're going crazy, but also, uh, another TSL quarterback, Cole McDonald. He played for the Conquerors of spring league. Uh, he's being signed to the Arizona Cardinals. This is big. This is big. This is the, the first official spring league NFL signing this year. We've had a bunch of guys jump to the spring, uh, to the CFL. We've had some guys go to fan control football. This is the first. TSL to NFL, uh, I believe they said on there uh, on the tweet. I don't think I, I hope I'm not misquoting that, but I believe that is um, Cole McDonald came in late to the spring league. I was asking Vince all football scouting report on Twitter about it. Uh, he played like week three, didn't do a lot, uh, but he was, this is a note. So he was a quarterback that got brought in. Remember Justin McMillan, the guy that got in the fight. And then yeah. that coach is now in fan control football. No. Yeah. Uh, they brought in Cole McDonald to kind of replace Justin McMillan. So it's all connected. All connected. It's all connected. Uh, the Spring League, uh, Spring League uh, Showdown, Fight, whatever, the episode we had was a good one. Talking, about the, Justin, one. Yeah. <laughs> talking about the Justin McMillan fight. Still laughing about that. That's ridiculous. A quarterback for a, for a professional football team threw a punch at a coach of the opposing team on the sidelines. It is, that was a wild, that was a wild uh, moment. What a, what a moment. Uh, a couple more spring league signings going to the CFL. Uh, Deshaun Amos signed with the Stampeders, and uh, TJ Roming has signed with the BC Lions. Yeah, so uh, more more uh, spring leaguers going to the CFL. Uh, you gotta love the username on that one. Uh, got the juice. Three got the juice. Three got the juice for uh, <laughs> yeah. TJ yeah. Rowling. Uh, but no, but you know, Spring League, like I said, we're, we're waiting for news coming back about that too, because it, we're just getting to that timeline where I would imagine in the in the March, April, um, I would I would expect to see another uh, bubble season, hopefully. Awesome. Uh let's move on to fan control football. We don't have to take a break quite yet. We're not gonna, you know, break after like three minutes here for our audio podcast listeners. Uh so let's get right back, back into fan controlled football. Where's your jersey? No one's mentioned this yet. I just wanted to say this the 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 League starts next week. The draft is on the 10th. The first game's on the 13th. We were told when we ordered the jerseys, they would be coming before the kickoff. So I, I'm not saying that anything's awry yet. I'm just saying I'm waiting for my jersey. I'll be expecting a uh, you know, a, a confirmation shipping email at some point. But I got my Wild Aces one coming. And they're still adding. That's the other thing, too, we'll get into. They're still adding team owners. So it, it, it feels a little, uh, I don't want to say scattered, but it feels a little scattered. It feels like they're just trying to gather, like they're constantly gathering. There, there's so much, and 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 this would be my my one critique, and and nobody at, at, clearly at the league cares what what we think, but uh, as, as someone that you know, we have covered the league now for I don't know the better part two, of six two and months. a half months, yeah, two three two three months. Yep. Um, I am someone that covers this 
you know, as professionally as I can as a part-time thing while I, you know, I'm self-employed. And right. I like can't keep track of stuff all the time. They have all these Twitch shows coming and they're like when the league started, they're gonna do like a Monday thing and the Tuesday thing and the Wednesday thing. You know, the games are Saturday. I'm like, who is watching all of this stuff? I I don't know if there's an audience right now. I don't know. That's what I'm saying. And like, it's just, it's so much in trying to keep track. Is it oversaturation? It feels like it. And it feels like, you know, people want to know about the football. They want to know about the players. Uh, I want to talk about this Manziel thing too. They did this whole video about it when we get to it. But like, I think people will be really happy with just a 60 second video on Twitter about, Hey, here's Billy Bob and he's a wide receiver. And this is his little tidbit. And then, okay. Vote for him next week in the thing. Here's, right. here's Jake. He's also great. He, you know, like, you know, we see these, like we're live streaming the practices. That looks terrible. I'm not watching that. I'm not someone maybe that's a big football junkie is, you know, watching the practice cams every day. Vince could probably watch that. Vince could watch that. And that, yeah, I'm mean, like, right. So, so for Vince, maybe that is, but I'm saying like, as someone that, that tries to cover this, look at the broad scope, you know, okay. Who's marketing you? Know, who is the market for this? I just don't know. Like, we're doing that, but then we're also like not showing the players at all. Like it's a very weird, it's a very weird dynamic. I'm I'm intrigued with the saturation of content. A little bit. I'm not gonna like, watch it. But I'm, it. I'm not gonna watch it. Like I, that's what I'm saying. Like I'm I I, either. I'm covering this thing and I'm not watching it. It's a lot. It's a it's a lot. Uh they have, you know, the app came out. I messed around with the app last night. You know, it, it's it's I don't know who has the time to like do all this and we're voting. You know, I, I think I went on, I, you know, we're trying, I'm trying not to get too invested in like the voting and stuff. Cause we're trying to cover it. Right. But I think I've even missed like some of the votes along the way. I'm like, and I'm covering this, <laughs> like we're covering this and I'm missing, like, I couldn't even tell you like what the vote is right now for like, what's a catch or what's going on. It just, it's a lot of things, but I, it, it doesn't seem like it's anything that's, that's concrete. It's a very odd dynamic. Uh, you talked about them bringing more owners in, and Ronnie Singh has apparently joined the uh, Zappers owner groups, owners group. And you say people aren't happy? Yeah, people are not happy about this. Why? I, am I am I missing something? So, uh, do you know Ronnie Singh? I don't. Okay, so Ronnie Singh works for Two K Games, and people aren't happy because they think that Two K Games have ruined a lot of the games oh, going yeah. on. So do you know more? Like that's why I figured you would know a little bit more about this. So what, I mean, I did, I did, I did not play the uh, WWE last two K that came yeah. out with, but I know they were re refunding people for it because it was terrible. Um, the two K games was only the two two K game system situation was only successful when they had that Ukes studio working with them on these games. Apparently, Ukes backed away last year, so the two K game they put out for WWE was terrible. Uh, was not playable. I can tell you from experience buying the year before, uh, it was BS. Like there's a storyline mode, and I won't get too detailed about it. But you could win a first few fights, and then all of a sudden, you you would spoiler alert: the game's been out for three years. But you would fight your old uh, Booker. He would put him on a mask, and you would fight him. And you have to do these stupid things at stupid times. You could beat this guy down for like 15 minutes, and he'd be in the red. And the minute you let him get one punch in, all of a sudden the momentum went onto his side. He could get like seven kicks in and beat you. And it was, it was, I, I completely stopped playing that storyline mode. I actually stopped playing the game after a month. So I can see why people aren't happy about someone from 2K Games who the studio hasn't really put out much in terms of good content game wise lately, not being happy about this. Yeah. Makes sense now. Yeah, a, a lot of the events were showing this to me. A lot of like the Instagram comments, a lot of the Twitter comments were like, you know, go fix your games before you come in here. It's just interesting because that's the thing. You're bringing in these owners and these celebrities that are, um, you know, in the media spotlight and you're asking people to vote on things and support teams. And, you know, there might be someone that people don't like, right? You know, maybe, maybe Marshawn Lynch goes out tomorrow and, heaven forbid, does something or whatever. I mean, these people are associated. It's, it's an interesting dynamic. But yeah, people were not happy with, with Ronnie Singh coming on. Also, apparently the Wild Aces are bringing in another owner. I'm sure it will be announced by the time that this episode drops. It'll come, you know, come on at midnight tonight. Uh, that is also interesting too to me. And I don't know, 
like Greg commented on it on Twitter. Greg Miller, one of the owners, CE was like, oh, so I don't know. Like, you know, are they in all of that? Why are we still bringing in owners now? We're a week away. I have no idea. I have no idea. Seems weird. Um, what do you think? So I, I put these investor numbers up. They've probably gone up slightly today. Just the, the, these were you know a few hours old. Uh, the investors, I went through all the investor pages for all the teams because remember, you can invest in the fan control football teams. Yep. What, what, what? So I, I'll, I guess I'll read the numbers and then give me your thoughts. Uh, the Beast currently have like uh, 389 investors. They've raised almost $171,000. Glacier Boys, 125 for almost 70,000. Wild Aces, 137 for 75,000. And then the Zappers, 108 uh, investors for 66,000. Well, the things that I can determine here are the three other teams, you add their numbers up and they still don't have as many investors as the Beasts. That's an interesting stat right there. I'm not talking about the financials, I'm talking about the numbers, yeah. actual investors. Well, I think for both, I mean, it's pretty close. I mean, you could put all three of them. I mean, it's it's a pretty close I'm, triple for the rest of them to them. Uh, I think the three combined might uh, financially beat them by about 10 grand. Well, but I'm that is, I'm just saying, like, yeah. that means uh, uh, you know, the beasts have here's this league built on social media, all that. The beasts, they're fine. Social media, they post a little bit. I think the names of Marshawn Lynch. I think the names of Renee Montgomery, I think the name of Miro, uh, you know, Mike Tyson is no longer with that. Uh, some of the articles that are covering this league, uh, you know, maybe the bigger media that is covering this league, but it's not as invested as we are. Uh, they still talk about Mike Tyson being on there. But it is interesting that this one team, terrible logo, terrible jerseys, terrible social media presence, they have almost 400 investors and 171,000. And I mean, 125 people are being completely fleeced by the Glacier Boys. It's terrible. <laughs> terrible <laughs> um they uh I, I will say whoever runs godspeed to whoever runs the glacier boy social media uh, for all i know it's patrick d's running all the different social media accounts uh co co-founder of the league uh whoever runs the glacier boy social media they and i have gone back and forth and today finally he goes uh I uh, tweeted like, I hope the wild aces get a flat tire on the way to work or something. And I retweeted. Wow, I go, what a sick burn, bro. <laughs> but then I go, I go, you can't just go around being rude to people <laughs> all the time. And then they retweeted back at me, the Spider-Man gif where it's like, we are both doing the same thing. Cause I'm just as guilty of being rude. I thought, okay, <laughs> that's, that's touche. Uh, anyway, but, but they've raised, uh, you know, almost $300,000, right. If I'm, if I'm doing the math, right. On the, uh, fan control football. That's not too shabby. Not too shabby at all. Hmm. Um, so talking about Johnny Manziel, he is finally in the bubble as of February 1st. Congratulations, about- Johnny. Welcome to the bubble. Welcome to the show. Um, this is kind of the meat of what I want to talk about with fan control stuff tonight. What do you think about Manziel finally coming into the bubble? We are, uh, I think three weeks of the bubble now, two weeks of, of practice, and now he has come in for the last two weeks. He's still in quarantine, I would imagine, right now, having come in on, on Monday. What do you think about him coming in now with a week to go? I have concerns about chemistry. I have concerns that other players are going to resent him for showing up whenever he wants to. I have concerns about this. I have concerns that the league is building him as the one and only star that they'll have. I have concerns. I have concerns. Uh, they released the player uh, rankings. Uh, Let me guess. Menzel's number one. Yeah, Menzel's number one for the QBs, uh, which yeah. is interesting because he hasn't played at all. You know, Jurdy, uh, Jurdy, friend of the show, uh, Jurdy uh, uh, Erdman is number four. Um, what's interesting to me is, uh, was it Bleacher? Uh, what? Hang on. Let me get this video up here. Uh Bleacher, yeah, Bleacher Report posted this whole video. It's got 72,000 views on theirs, and that's being retweeted a bunch. Uh, basically, uh, about a month ago, um, Johnny Manziel went down to Arizona with Ray Austin and did this whole like social media shoot and all this. We saw photos of it. And if you watch this video, it's like Manziel, like, man, it feels good to be back. And like, you know, I like getting hit. I want to get hit. It feels good to do all this stuff. And it's, it's, you know, it's a very cinematic uh, video. Whoever shot it doesn't know how to color grade the footage. It's, it's a, you know. Oh, yeah. Paul and I are both, uh, uh, you know, professional videographers. And it is frustrating when people uh, shoot things uh, in a format and they don't know how to properly, you know, edit them for broadcast. Uh, but, but, but it's a really good video. It's talking about, you know, Menzel coming back and he's driving down the road and they're with him and he's on the field and he's talking to guys and all this. 
and you and and even one of the owners goes, "Oh yeah, you know, when I get him a month in the bubble, I'm really gonna, you know, we're really gonna whip him into shape." I'm like, "Well, first off, you're gonna get him for a week in the bubble, uh, and second off, there is." Um, I tweeted uh, all uh, Vince and fan control football news. I said, how many players are currently signed to fan control football? And they said, well, probably 110 to 120. Why are there not 110 or 120 other videos of all these guys like this? That's what I'm saying. If you're going to do all that work for Manziel. Johnny's the star. They're letting you know it's Johnny and then everyone else. That's a, I mean, we got to be critical of this. Yeah, we do. Sorry. So that's what that's the message it's sending to me. If he walks in the first week and throws five picks because he hasn't played in, in two years. I'd be interesting. That'd be funny. Uh, they're, uh, I believe they're playing, uh, they're playing the beast the first week. And so Vince had said, uh, we need to make sure the beasts have the best defense that first week to really slam it down uh, Johnny's throat. Okay. Anyway, it's I'd just like interesting. It happen. I just, you know, I, I like to be an advocate for the players. I know a lot of people that cover the league, you know, all this other stuff's going on. They want to be advocates for the players. And I really wish a lot of these other guys that were sweating every day down there right now, you know, in Atlanta, in the bubble, doing the stuff on, uh, you know, doing the stuff on Twitter and doing the stuff on Twitch and staying in the hotel rooms and, and doing all this stuff, doing the workouts in the hotel rooms, in quarantine, all this stuff. I just wish they were getting that same publicity that Johnny got with the, you know, with like the bleacher report and with all this other stuff. It's just, I, I just wish that it's, it's the same thing with, I was talking to Dorothy about this with like WWE and Vince McMahon and let's go back to the stars again. Let's bring back the undertaker. Let's bring back whoever. And you could build, you could have built 15, 20 guys in the time in the last three weeks, if you wanted to, right? Look at journey, journey, journey's huge. We've had him on the show. He's been on a lot of shows. Uh, Slick Nick's another one. I think he wants to come on the show. He's a big kind of Marshawn looking guy. Did a big backflip. You know, we've got a glimmer of a couple of these guys, but you really could have built him up if you wanted to, as opposed to building uh, new sets for Twitch shows. That I don't know if people are going to watch. Uh, I'm, I'm confused. I, I'm befuddled. I just wish I, I, I wish I could process this fast enough. I don't, I don't know what, what's going on. It feels like, there's things being like they're they're trying to, you know, the old adage that WCW was run by a television company putting on a wrestling show as opposed to WWE being a wrestling show putting on a TV program. You know that how they said that about the failure of WCW as opposed to WWE. This seems like it's a Twitch gaming channel trying to put on a football league as opposed to a football league adding shows, if that makes sense. Uh, the other interesting thing is they announced this week, uh, Josh Davis ran with it, that um, after this first season, the, the plan is to have eight teams and they're going to go three months on, three months off, three months on, three months off. And uh, if you think about that, which first off, I would, again, I would get through a season. I know, yeah. I know, I know we have a million ideas. I know, I know, I know it's like these millennials and, and we're a little bit older. Like, I know it's like, I got a million ideas. Like we're going with it. I would get through a season, but that that would put uh, th their next season in August. How many how many players of quality are are going to be available to play in August in a normal football calendar? Aren't they all going to try to get to the NFL too? Yes, that's the point. I had a whole conversation with someone about this. That it's like you don't you don't exist in, in in a vacuum. I know it's a bubble season right now. I know there's nothing going on. Again, we've talked about this. If XFL was going on, you know, we would still be covering this in a much more, you know, minority part, but but you don't exist in a vacuum and you need to understand that these players are trying to get to other things. And and even this, you know, you know, the pay for some of these games, you know, what what we've seen reported, I don't know if it's exact, but it's not the most money in the world to be getting played uh, paid to play football games. And so right. if you're not paying uh, playing for the money, and you're playing for the tape, but that these games don't resemble what a football game would look like. I don't know what the benefit is of playing in this league because you're not going to be playing in fan control football for, you know, I'm going to play for three months and I'm going to be off and I'm going to be back again. Like that's not going to get you through a year playing, playing six months of fan control football. I agree. I, this is weird. Even, you know, even if it was like the XFL, 
I could have a nine month or an eight month a year job, right? And I could, you know, take off. Okay, I'm going to go in December. I'm going to go December, January, February, you know, whatever, and then go back again. But there's three months on, three months off. You can't even do that with this. You don't even get that benefit of like, okay, what? Well, well, how, how could you even have a part time job to, to to help supplement? No one, no one. I have I have to break the news to fan control football here. None of your players are going to forego a chance to try out for an NFL team to stick around for your league. I'm sorry. They're not. That's just, that's the truth. Do you think that they would, do you think they would do it over the XFL? I mean, I'm not trying to be a mark for the XFL. I'm, I'm generally asking that question. I think they would pick the XFL or fan control football. I, I'm, I'm not trying to be a mark either, but I would pick the XFL has more of a following. It has more exposure. It has more proof of concept in terms of turning players into NFL caliber players. The XFL is more football than the rules that fan controlled football has laid down. If you are going to, if you want, if your goal is to be an NFL player, are you going to want to attach yourself to a league that is more like the NFL to show the NFL you're ready? Or would you ditch that idea to go play for this fan control football league, which is not as not nearly as similar to the NFL as XFL is? That's always obvious. Yeah, that's always my thing it is. I believed in this league when I thought that it would resemble more of what football is. And, and, and again, we're going to, you know, we're watching it. It's fine. You know, people have tuned out if you're not into the fan controlled stuff at this point, but um, you know, I just, I want these players that are really trying, that are really down there, that are taking months away from their family, that are doing all these things. I just want them to have something to show for it after this. And I'm so afraid that this like, Oh, and then it, you're, you know, how, how do you show tape to someone? Well, it was like the third down and we were ready to go. And then, well, the social media had voted on this power up. And so they got an extra time out and then they came in and then I had a buzzer blocker and then they took me out of the game. And then I had to play wide receiver and then my O line. Like, I don't, I don't know how that, how that translates to, to what these players ultimately want from this, which is to play, not that fan control isn't professional football, but to, to play other forms of professional football. I don't know either. That's the, you bring up all valid points. How, how do you do, how do you, how do you present a tape of highlights from this gimmicky league? Let's be, let's be honest. It's a gimmicky league. There's a lot of gimmicks here. I don't know how you present this as, Hey, look, I can play in the NFL. Look at this. Look at this uh, mo- moment where I got flipped from defensive back to wide receiver and I was able to catch a ball. Luckily. Surprisingly, yeah, I think I I think it was there, I, and we'll see. We'll we'll see how this goes. I think I think we were there. Yeah, coaches are in the bubble for fan control football. Only one coach on each position. I mean, I'm reading. Yeah, so so this is interesting. It came out today. Um, Andrew with uh, uh, it's the XFL fan podcast. He was tweeting that the, somehow they're going to have coaches for uh, during the games because that was the big concern. Like we had Chase Baker on. You know, he's the O line coach. Well, how, when you have, you know, two different games going on or, or you have one O-line coach and you have two different teams playing, who's going to be managing these positions during the game to make sure everybody's on the same page? I don't know about Just that. the head coach? Yeah. Just the head coach? But, I mean, do we have, do we have head coaches? We should. See, do we, we? Yeah, so we have John Jenkins. He's the head coach, director of player personnel. But that's a head coach. That, so like, they only have one head coach. Well, it, 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 this is the question. This is the question that people have. You know, so like the first game is Wild Aces versus Glacier Boys. You know, who is doing the head coaching for the other team? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It's interesting. I have no idea. Uh, they're they're voting right now on what a catch is. I think that's an, that's the latest vote on here. Uh, if, if a ball hits the ground or not when it's uh, when it's fielded. And then the last thing I had for fan controlled. Oh, they got the field down. They got the field down. It looks like the stadium does look really cool. It looks really cool. They built this whole like it looks like yeah. it looks like a WWE set. It's like a Titan Tron. There's smoke. There's a ramp coming down. They got the field. I mean, the field looks good. It's weird. I don't watch a lot of arena football, so it is kind of weird to see like a fifty a fifty yard field. 
Uh, but it does it does look cool. I think I think it's top notch dollars in production value behind this. I just don't know what the um, what the and know. top notch money behind Johnny Manziel promo videos too. Yeah, you gotta wonder what Manziel's getting paid for us the rest of these guys. Mm-hmm. Another question. No, sorry, I do, I'm very skeptical. They just seem to be like focusing on one guy, and then everyone else is is just chopped liver. Yeah, it's interesting. So. We're going to take one more break, come back and uh, fill out the rest of our show. I'm excited about this because I was a big fan back in the day. So we're going to break, we're going to come back and I'm going to talk about this because I'm just, I'm, I'm through the roof excited on this, believe it or not. I mean, to take a break. There we go. We're back in and we're going and we're going. Um, I'm excited because EA sports is bringing back college football. This was uh, overwhelmed my social media. Like nothing I've ever seen. Yeah. People are very hyped. Yeah, it was it was hands down like when they got to a point where they were integrating college football, you'd export the file and you pick up the new copy of Madden and you'd import the file like you built a player in college and you you took him to national championship, got all his 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 attributes up to a great level. And you're like, I'm done after four years. What can I do with this player now? You actually were able to export this player to Madden and continue. I think that's awesome. That's I think that's the coolest thing. And that was so awesome that you could like say, oh, you know, I, I built this player from scratch and after four years, I can't use him anymore. And then you could go take him to a new video game and use him even longer. It, it was so interesting. Uh, we have my friend Frank coming on Wheelhouse this week. Uh, we kind of ambushed him. It was a great uh, little segment there we have with him. But Frank and I used to play this game all the time, all the time. Uh, we were addicted to it, to where we built our own colleges. You could build your own colleges. Um, you could set your college like a juggernaut or, you know, middle of the road and, you know, win the national championship, move yourself into a conference, move another team out. For example, I would move myself into the pack pack 10 at the time and move Arizona state out. It was really fun. This is a really cool thing that they're doing. And of course, the reason why they had to pull uh, these kinds of games off the shelf was because there was a lawsuit filed where you pick up basically what, what happened was we would pick up the game, uh, the NCAA football game, and you put it in, and you'd you'd see not player names, but for example, I know this because I used to play with Arizona a lot. You'd see quarterback number seven, and you and knew you'd, who that was. You'd see a height and a weight and a hometown, and you go to Arizona's roster, and you look up Willie Tuitama, who is number seven, the same height, the same weight, the same hometown that's in the NCAA football game. So regardless of them giving the names to the actual players, they were using their physical attributes. They were using their physical likenesses to sell this game. So Ed O'Bannon from UCLA saw this and went, wait, what the F got a band of athletes together and said, look, here's the deal. They are marketing our likenesses without paying us one. And without naming us, they think they're getting away from out from not paying us. Um, you could go when I worked in Tucson, you could go to the, uh, the, the bookstore on, in, on the U of A campus, you go to the bookstore and you could go buy a basketball Jersey, Arizona basketball Jersey with the number 43 on it. No name on the back, just number 43. You knew you were buying Jordan Hills Jersey, but because Jordan Hills name wasn't on the back, you weren't really buying Jordan Hills Jersey and he didn't get anything from it. I didn't get anything from it. Yeah. I was completely on the player's side. It sucks that we lost this game because this game was really fun. Yeah. And when it comes back, Reed, I'm telling you, you got to try it. It's you're gonna you're gonna love this game. Well, it's so funny. So they they they, they announced okay, we're bringing it back next gen consoles. You know, Xbox. I got my Series S. All that stuff just came out right now. It's so two to three years away. Like they haven't even started on it. And it's like, man, we're gonna be at the next consoles before this game even comes. It's just that's a long lead time for a video game. Three years. Well, I mean, they've got some of the framework down now. I mean, the, not this year's Madden game, but the, I think they have the last year's Madden game. Uh, they have a, a mode where you have a guy that you create and you take him through the national championship and he plays for one of like six teams, like either it's Texas Tech or USC or Texas, one of these six schools. And after you're done playing the national championship as a backup, like the back, the the main guy gets injured and you're the backup and you get to play your first college game is in the national championship 
playoff system. Is your name Taylor Heineke? No, it's not. <laughs> um, but they have this kind of system built into Madden a little bit. So you could tell they were kind of already flirting with bringing this game back. So uh, it, even, if, even if it's three years out, I still feel like this is going to be a hot item. And I think that people are still going to be into this. And I think they're still going to buy it. And it's going to sell like hotcakes. It's probably outsell Madden. If I'm being honest, it's going to outsell Madden. Because people want the college experience back. I didn't know they had such a story mode to it. I just thought it was like you play, you oh, know, play the game, play the game, play the game. This is such a cool game, and I can't, I can't stress how cool it is enough. Like, I fell in love with this game. There is still a very devoted community to this game that they have the last version that had Desmond <laughs> Howard on the front. And what they do is in their little Facebook groups or something, they will send people updated rosters. Yeah. They're like, okay, here are the stats. Your updated roster for this year. There's still people who update this game, spend hours updating this game. It's incredible. So the love affair is back. I'm excited. You should be excited, especially when this game drops. I'm telling you, it's, it's going to be fun. Okay. Uh, I, a couple of notes real quick. Uh, speaking of the WWE games we were talking about earlier with Ronnie Singh, uh, did you ever play the, was it like Robert Smackdown when you could be like the GM and like book the shows? Like you could yeah, like, yeah, make yeah. It, like it was way better than even like the wrestling game. It's like, no, I just want to like simulate the shows every week. I, that's that's what we you know, like you get there's like these head coach modes where uh in in the ncaa football you had these head coach modes where you just like go and recruit and then just you know like you would do the paperwork aspect of things yeah, as yeah. opposed to <laughs> the on-field stuff uh, did you ever see xavier woods and uh tyler breeze uh do their youtube series on up up down down where they were playing every, every week no one was the gm for raw one was the gm for smackdown and they booked their shows without the other one knowing it, it's an interesting series. They were playing this mode specifically because of this, how cool this mode was. It's cool. Remember I, when we were friending that last week that like Tyler Breeze follows me on Twitter, maybe he listens to the show. Maybe, maybe Tyler maybe. Breeze is an XFL Marcast fan. Wait, we can get him on the show. Yeah, that'd be great. Uh, the other quick note um, today, well, last night I downloaded it today. Um, they have, uh, if you remember old school video games, you have the Tony Hawk, the N64, uh, they they revamped them this year, so like you can play like the original Tony Hawk like, Pro Skater game, but it's all like updated, new graphics and everything. Uh, I was very excited. Forty dollars, you got uh, one and two. It it doesn't. It's not as fun as I thought it would be. I really thought I would go back and like I'm so bad at it now. Like I could play the whole level like with my eyes closed, like go through and get everything. Very very challenging game now uh, at uh, middle thirties to do that. Well, well, it it you know. I'd like to say it's like riding a bike, but sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's not. All right. Did we Thanks go an hour? Did we go an what? hour? How long did we go? We went an hour. That's good. Well, we didn't have much. I'm glad. I just was curious. I have no idea. I a, lot of, a lot of filler. A lot of filler today. We've talked about a lot of things. We kind of, you know, I kind of spaced out a little bit of the cell fan, fan control football thing. Uh, but I, we got away an hour. Yeah, just a little bit over an hour. Congratulations. We did it. Uh, happy 21st birthday to the XFL. Yep. And, uh, of course... Oh xflshow.com slash review to leave us a review on our podcasts and F- xflshow.com slash merch to buy some XFL Markcast merch. Uh, one more thing we forgot to do. Uh, who are you taking in the Super Bowl? Who am I taking in the Super Bowl? I think the Bucks are going to win. Yeah, I was, dang it, I was hoping we would like disagree. Yeah, I think Brady's uh, got I it. Think the, I think Brady's going to do it. Yeah, I got my Tampa shirt on. Uh, no, I'm I, not betting against Tom anymore. I said Tom wasn't going to make what I said they were going to make the NFC championship. I said that right. And they made yeah. the NFC championship and won it. So I'm not betting against Tom anymore. I'm done. I do think, I do think uh, Patrick Mahomes is going to win though. I want Brady to win. I know um, he's questionable. Some things nowadays, people don't like him, but it's really remarkable just to, you know, yeah. Make it, Age make it, to, you know, number 10. Did you know he's 43 years old? I have heard, I'm so tired for the Super Bowl to be done. Did you know that Matthew Stafford and uh, Clayton Kershaw were uh, teammates on a <laughs> soccer team? That was going on for last week on Twitter. Every five minutes, someone was mentioning their teammates as 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 on soccer field, like when they were kids. I yeah, <laughs> the the two weeks. I know there was no Pro Bowl this year, but the two weeks between the the NFC AFC Championship games and the Super Bowl, it is like really the longest. Like Good Morning Football was doing like fake cooking segments this week. I mean, they've really uh, they've really hit a wall. I did get retweeted by Nate Burleson though. That was the highlight of my it was week. Kung Lao hats. Yes, yeah, I got to. Uh, but no, uh, I'm ready for the Super Bowl, but I am fearful that once the Super Bowl ends, we will not have any XFL back. 
Well, at least the weekend will perform at the Super Bowl. Right? Yeah, did you know that? <laughs> I knew that. Uh, still, I mean, I mean, he's going to perform at the Super Bowl, but didn't get one Grammy nomination. And that song has been out for a year now. That song came out a year ago. Yeah, it, it was, was the, the song of the summer, and it was well, it was a WrestleMania theme song last WrestleMania. Yeah, yeah. and now he's performing. I'm just, I'm like, that song has been out forever. Yeah, yeah. Did not one get, Grammy nomination though. No, no one Grammy nomination. Anyway, I uh, happy XFL uh, birthday and uh, yeah. yeah. Cheers. And uh, thanks for listening again. We'll see you next week.